My name is Steve Allen. Welcome to Shiloh Baptist Church, 1210 South Eugene Street, Greensboro, North Carolina. You honor us by worshiping with us today. Uh, praise you, the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Heavenly Father, we have come into this place to lift up holy hands and worship you, God. Let the worship be pleasing in your sight, God. Let the worship be one that you've ordained where we worship you in spirit and truth. May everything that is done be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning we invite your attention to the scripture that uh, we're going to be doing a smorgasbord. And at your leisure you can take and read the whole story, but I'm just going to take snippets this morning. Would you go to the first book in the Bible? In Genesis and chapter 6 is where we're going to start. And if you will scroll down to verse 5, and we will read a few verses, and then I will direct you from there. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And 6 says, And he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But the verse 8 says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 10 says, and Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The 11th verse says, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. The 14th verse says, God directs and says unto Noah in the 13th verse, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Verse 14 says, Make thee an ark of gopher, wood, room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Scroll down with me, if you don't mind, to verse 17. And it says, And behold, I, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh where it is, the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Verse 18 says, But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. Verse 22 says, And thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, and so did he. And then if you will, if you look over in chapter 7, and verse 1 he says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. And then verse 7 says, And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons wives with him into the ark, because of the waters of the flood. And then verse 16, which is going to be our launching pad, says, And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Amen. For just a few moments, I want you to pray for me and pray with me as I preach from the subject, shut in for your own good. Shut in for your own good. Heavenly Father, this is the preaching moment. God, people have come and people have come at least through uh, the Facebook land and through God, YouTube this morning, seeking a word from you. They come, God, because there's trouble on every side. They come, God, because every time they turn in any direction, it seems like bad news. And so, God, they have come seeking a word from the Lord. Speak to your people, God. Give them words that will 
bolster their souls, give them words, God, to let them know that everything is already being orchestrated, that you are behind and you are in front of, and that you, God, will take care of us, even in times like these. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. These past few weeks have been trying times. Many parts of, if not most of our nation, have been shut in. Here in my native state of North Carolina, many of us have been placed on restrictions by governmental orders from our normal activities. We've been ordered to stay at home. For all intents and purposes, we have been shut in. For those of you who are listening today, if you've been raised in the church, you're familiar with the term sick and shut in. For those of you who don't know church language, the sick and shut in are those who are confined to their homes or the places that they have to live in at this time, season of their lives. Now there's a difference sometimes between the sick and the shut in. The sick may be able to get out and come to church on Sunday morning, but those who are shut in, they're the ones who, who cannot come out when they want to. In fact, if you were to go visit with them and you got to talk with them, one of the greatest things they, that they miss is the opportunity to come out and worship in the house of the Lord one more time. Oh, if they could just move about as they please. Now, I should tell you that other folks are shut in. As a child, you may remember being shut in. Oh, but well, sometimes that shut in was, was a false shut in. You may uh, have failed to do your homework, and then you played sick. Anybody ever played sick? And then your mama came and, and, and checked you out, and you had a little cough or whatever, and, and you know you really were sick because you didn't want to go to school and fail that test that you had not prepared for. But once you play sick, then you were really sick. They made you stay home in bed, and then, of course, it just happened to be the day when the sun was shining bright. And all your homies, all your buddies were outside playing. And when they came and asked if you could come out to play, that's when you found yourself shut in. <laughs> you had to stay there. You couldn't go out. You couldn't play with the boys. You couldn't play with the girls. You found yourself confined to the house. Now, there are other people who are shut in. And sometimes, you know, this is being locked up. Sometimes people are locked up behind prison bars. They're locked up in jails. And oh, if they wish that they were not shut in. But you know, sometimes even being locked up in prison can be a blessing. You don't believe me. Well, in my former life, I used to be a, a Superior Court judge. And you would be surprised how many occasions, even in the last few years, and what stands out is that when I first began to preach, oh, it was about uh, 13 years ago now, I was sitting in the Divinity School class one day, and I received a call. And it was from somebody I had sent to jail. And that person told me that when I sent him to prison, I saved his life. And that's not the only time. Because I, in fact, in the last several months, I've had persons come up to me and say, you sent my brother to jail. And that's the best thing. Or you send him to prison. And that's the best thing that ever happened to him. Because he came out a changed man. He's doing well now. And then within the last several weeks, I've had somebody come up. And I haven't been a judge now for over 23 years. Somebody came up to me in the last several weeks and said, you don't remember me, do you? Said, I was in your courtroom. And you, you know, you dealt with me. And I want you to know I'm doing well now. I'm, I'm living right now. So sometimes you have to be shut up for your own good. Sometimes we're shut up and confined like we are now, and we really don't want to be. We would rather go about our natural business or ordinary daily affairs, but the circumstances that we're living in right now indicate that we need to stay home. And so I encourage you to stay home. But you know what? Sometimes staying home is for our own protection. Sometimes being shut in can keep you from every hurt, harm, and danger. 
right now throughout this land, in fact, in, throughout the whole world, in over 150 countries, we have been invaded by an enemy. It is a disease called the coronavirus. I heard somebody today, uh, and they had to be uh, from the hood, they called it the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, from corona to rona. Yeah, but we were restricted from corona or by corona or by rona, as the case may be. Our normal act, daily activities have been curtailed. Uh, uh, in many places, the governors, the mayors, the county commissioners have issued executive orders or ordinances have been passed or established in order to try to, to they say, flatten the curve. But the real reality is what they're trying to do is to keep us from getting, if possible, this disease, from having it to spread. But you know what? You know what they call it? They call it the stay-at-home policy. That's a nice way for saying you should in. There are biblical underpinnings, however, for times like the ones that we're experiencing right now, when people have been shut up for their very own good. There was a man named Noah, and Noah had a lot of things going for him. Noah was a righteous man. He lived in a day and age when those around him were corrupt. And not only were they corrupt, but their actions had corrupted the very earth. It was an evil time. In many respects, just like the days we live in today. You see, God had made the earth. And when God made the God's green earth, everything in it was good. And then you know what God did? He placed us in charge of it. He placed man in charge of it. And now we have contamination of the soil. Now we have polluted rivers and waters. Now the air that we even breathe have all been polluted, corrupted by our activities. And as our natural resources have been corrupted, so have our lives. We have become a society. We have become a world. And I looked up what corrupt meant, by the way, because I didn't want to tell you my definition. The word corrupt is defined as guilty of dishonest practices, as bribery, lacking integrity, or crooked. And then the word corrupt is further defined. And this is the same definition that we find in the Bible as debased in character, depraved, perverted, wicked, and evil. Isn't that what God said in the book of Genesis? And that's the way the Bible describes the world's condition in the day of Noah. God looked at the world and saw that it was evil. And it grieved God. God was sorry that he had ever made us. Now, I don't know, but when I was a little boy, the worst thing a parent could ever say is that you were sorry. That you weren't worth the bread, the salt it took to go in your bread. <laughs> now, that, 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 brought, that, was, that, that made you feel mighty low, didn't it? Anybody old enough to remember those kind of expressions? God looked at the world and said that he was sorry. And then God made up his mind that he would destroy both man and beast. And everything was in it. But thanks be to God, God looked around and he saw one righteous man. He saw Noah. And God entered into a covenant with Noah. God said that he would preserve Noah and Noah's family. You don't think one man makes a difference? You know, Joshua, y'all remember Joshua? Joshua says, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Long before Joshua was even thought of. Noah was such a righteous man that he definitely had an impact on his family. And because of his integrity, God saved not only Noah, but he saved his wife. He saved his three sons and he saved the wives of the sons. And God said he would begin a new creation and they would be the seed for that new creation. And then God thought about it. And what God did was he decided to save a male and a female of every animal, of every kind. And then God provided a safe place for them to be. God had ordained that he was going to send a, a, a flood. And this flood was going to pervade the whole wide world, much like the coronavirus is pervading the world today. And he said, God said, but I'm going to 
place you in a safe place. I'm going to give you a, a shelter. And this shelter was not a conventional shelter. Well, we've seen it in some respects today because we've had people who've been affected by this coronavirus and they were on cruise ships and they had to stay on the ships. Unfortunately, many of them were infected by the virus, but God gave them a place where there was not going to be a, a swallowing up. It was not going to be death. There was not going to be destruction. God gave them specific directions to build an ark. And this ark was going to be, if you will, it was going to be a house for Noah and his family to stay shut up in. God gave him the dimensions. He told him the height. He told him the breadth. He told him the width. And time would not permit me to go into all that with you today, but you can read it at your own pleasure. But the most important thing is, is that he told them and that Noah obeyed God. Noah was heard what God said, and Noah lived in a time much like our time where I know that there were people that laughed at Noah for being righteous. I know there were people who, who, who made fun of Noah. If he had lived in our day and our hood, Noah, why are you building that all? You think it's going to rain? No, there's no forecast for rain. But Noah did not let the detractors, God, Noah did not let those who made fun of God and God's word interfere with him being obedient to the word of God. And so Noah built the ark and God told him he was going to send the rain and God sent the rain. And the Bible says that before the rain began to fall, he told Noah and his family to enter into the ark. And Noah and his family entered into the ark, and the, the animals that he had picked out, they entered into the ark. And wait a minute, you need to understand this. God made provision. He told them to take some food with them. There was enough food not only for him, and hopefully, and I know it's food for y'all today. Those of y'all been shut up because y'all been emptying out of grocery stores. We can't find anything on the shelves. Uh, you got plenty of toilet tissue, and, and got plenty of bread and everything else, cleaning products. But guess what? It's good to have those things, but it's better to have God as your protection. And so it is that God puts them in, tells them to go in. And once they get in there, God shuts them in. God seals them in. You know what God does? God puts his seal of protection all around them. And God had told them to put some, some tar, some pitch over there so it wouldn't leak. So the waters would not be able to seep in. And you know what happens? You can read the rest of the story, but it rains for 40 days. It rains for 40 nights. And the rains are so, so voluminous of such a great volume that it, it reaches to the highest mountain. It covers the highest mountain tops. And every animal, all those who are outside the ark, they are destroyed. Wouldn't you want to be in that safe place in your life? Wouldn't you want to be shut in by God where you could be protected from the coronavirus, where you could be protected from any danger, any destruction, any plague, any disease, any waters, any harm? that evil could do to you. That's where we find Noah to, in this place. And that's where Noah's family is. He's in the place of shelter. He's in the place of protection. He's in a place of refuge. He's in a good place, I tell you. But guess what? Not only does God place him in this place, but Noah, to his credit, complied with God's orders. I encourage you today that you too comply with the orders of these government officials. We encourage you because your very life could be on the line. I'm so glad that God has a way that's mighty sweet. What God does is,
God allows the water to remain upon the earth. And you know what the difference is? When God put Noah under his protection, when God shut him in, God did not tell him how long he was going to be there. Now, you know, if that was us, we want to know how long it's going to be, when can I get out? And I'm sure, you know, most of us, and we haven't even started confinement yet, <coughs> but most of us would have cabin fever. But Noah is obedient to God. Noah goes, not knowing how long it's going to be. Well, do you know how long Noah stayed confined? <coughs> do you know how long Noah was shut in? One year and 16 days. The good news for us, those of us, our prayer is good news. At least that's what they anticipate, but it could be longer. But right now, at least here in Greensboro, North Carolina, they've told us that this shut-in policy or this stay-home policy is to be effective till about April the 16th. That's roughly about 18, 19 days. To God be the glory. We pray that that will be the limits. But whatever it is, just know that whatever time you still are in God's hands. And so the good thing of news this morning is not only that God shut them in, but the Bible says that God remembered Noah. I don't know about you, but there was an old song that the old church would say, Do, Lord. Do, Lord. Do remember me. Do, Lord. Do, Lord. Do remember me. Don't you want to be remembered by, by God? Don't you want God to know who you are? Don't you want God to know where you are? Don't you want your living to count? You don't want your living to be in vain. You need to know the Lord for yourself. You need to come in out of the rain, so to speak. Noah and his family were shut up. But the good news is that they did not die. Noah and his family had a stay in place order in their lives, but they were able to survive and live to see another day. Is there anyone else in here under the sound of my voice that has ever been kept by God? Have you been in danger and then God kept you? Have you found yourself in a place where you could not protect you, but God protected you all by himself? There's no safer place than to be in the arms, in the hands, in the protection of God. I told you the Bible says that they remove that they remember that God remembered Noah. And, and I've got to stop now. I've got to finish this sermon. But God remembered Noah. And it came to pass uh, at the 601st year. I've already told you. Well, I should have told you at the beginning that he entered in in the 600th year. And let me just stop there for a minute. That means that, 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 that Noah was an old man. And that's why they try to lock most of us up. Because they say we got pre-existing conditions. I imagine that Noah had pre-existing conditions. Noah, being as old as he was, may have suffered from Arthur. Y'all know Arthur. <laughs> Noah, yeah. as old as he was, may have suffered from bursitis. Y'all know about itis, don't you? Yeah. Noah, as old as he was, uh, may have uh, liked pinto beans and had some gout. And he just couldn't stop eating those pinto beans. One thing we can kind of surmise that Noah didn't have, we probably didn't have high blood pressure. Because back then they had not stopped eating meat. They had not started eating meat. So at that point he probably didn't eat the, the barbecue ribs and he didn't have the chopped barbecue. So hey, thank God <laughs> they didn't have high blood pressure. But as I worked my way uh, to the close of this sermon, God thought to himself, God had orchestrated time and events uh, that the water had receded. And uh, if you will, uh, Noah sent out a scouting party. He sent out a raven 
And that raven kept on flying, and he just kept flying to and fro. But he sent out another scout, and that scout was a dove. And that dove returned. And when the dove came back, at least the second time, he had a, had an olive branch in his mouth. And, and that meant that, uh, that the waters had receded. That meant, you see, the olive branch grew down at the low part of the ground. And it, that meant that the water had come all the way down to the ground. And he waited just a little while longer, and 150 days uh, uh, to be exact. But at that point, God said it was time. God lifted the restrictions. God said, Noah, you've been confined long enough. God said, Noah, it's all right now. It's time for you and for your sons and for your wife and for the wives of your sons to come out because the restrictions have fully been lifted. Do you know what Noah did? Noah did uh, what Noah and his wife did is what you and I uh, should be doing today. Uh, it's what you should do when the restrictions are lifted from off of us, wherever you are in the, uh, in the land. It, the Bible says that when Noah uh, and his family got off of that boat, <laughs> off of that ship, that Noah and his family, they went and Noah built an altar. And Noah took uh, two of those animals of every kind and he began to offer up sacrifices. In other words, what Noah and his family did was they began to worship God. Uh, they had a praise service. They had a worship service. And I don't know about you, but I feel like worship God right now. I don't know about you, uh, but I just want to praise his holy name. I thank you, God, for what you've already done. I thank you, God, for what you're doing right now. I I thank you, God, for what you did when you woke me up this morning. I thank you, God, for how you watched me all day long. I thank you, God, for watching over my children and my children's children. I thank you, God. Thank you, God. Praise and worship. I don't care where you are right now. But would you worship with him? Would you worship God right now? Would you thank God? Because there will come a time. It may be today, it may be tomorrow, it may have already occurred, it may not, but it, when God chooses, the restrictions will be lifted. Just remember that there comes sometimes in our life when we're shut down for our own good. We thank you for listening to us today. It could be there's someone here under the sound of my voice. And you are ready to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You are ready to move from where you are to where God will have you to be. You are ready to be obedient to God. You believe that Jesus is his son. You believe that God sent him to save a wretch like you. And you believe that if he saved me, he can save anybody. And you've heard of how he saved others before. And you believe, and I tell you, he can. He can save you today. Won't you turn your life over to him? Won't you just confess him right now? Lord, I, I repent of my sins. I'm sorry for all the wrongs I've done. Lord, I want you to be the Lord of my life. Lord, I want to do the right things. I want to follow you for all the rest of the days of my life. Lead me, Lord. Guide me, Lord. And Lord, save me, and I shall be saved. It doesn't matter the form you do it. It just matters that you do it. You just receive him right now, and your soul salvation, your soul shall be saved. Your salvation is assured. And But what I want you to do is a follow-up. If you would like to become a member of Shallow Baptist Church, I invite you to call me at Shallow Baptist Church. You can leave a message. Uh, 336-272-1166. Uh, I invite you to send an email to ShilohCares uh, at gmail.com. I invite you to text us, hit us up on Facebook Live, and give us, if you will, inbox us, or give us your Facebook, uh, give us your name and number. Just call us, email us, and we will respond to you. And if you don't want to join this church, we invite you to join some church where you can sit under good teaching and your salvation can be assured because you will be nurtured and encouraged in the word of God. As we close this morning, 
we invite you, of course, uh, we give you an opportunity. If you have been blessed today in the worship experience and you are not afraid to, to, to partner with us this morning, we invite you to join in the worship of giving. There are three ways or two ways today that you can give. You may mail your gift to Shiloh Baptist Church, 1210 South Eugene Street, Greensboro, North Carolina. That zip code is 27406. You may drop it by the church office. Sorry, that right now you can't move, but you can mail it. And if you have a cash app or you download cash app to your phone, then you can make a cash app donation to dollar sign Shiloh, S-H-I-L-O-H, B-C, G-S-O. Again, the cash app to dollar sign Shiloh, S-H-I-L-O-H, B-C, G-S-O. We invite you to come and to worship with us again next Sunday via Facebook Live or YouTube at uh, 11 o'clock a.m. And we also invite you to join the Shiloh prayer line. Uh, that prayer line is Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m. You may dial area code 425-436-6343, access code 375-386. Similarly, we have Bible study by dialing in to the same area code 425-436-6343, access code 375-386. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. See you next Sunday right here at Shiloh Baptist Church, 1210 South Eugene Street, Greensboro, North Carolina.